word is you want to zoom in a lot because it allows you to do a lot of details. So we're going to zoom right in. Are you going to work with us and draw a hummingbird? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So um, let me just go back here a little bit. Stop it. So I'd want to bring this down to a, a little bit lower. And so we're going to, the nice thing about this is with, when you work with layers, you can work with uh, smaller sizes and all other stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is just draw the eye, just the eye of the bird. And so it's, we're just going to do it to really simply, it's just going to be a straight line straight across. And then I want you to draw a circular line like this. And this is going to be our bird's eye. Where's the eraser? The eraser is just the undo at the top always. Right here? Yeah. Oh, okay. And just, if you keep clicking on that, it yeah. makes everything go away. That's one of the greatest things about drawing on the tablet is that you can just erase. But there's also an eraser. The eraser is over on this side. Mm -hmm. You can see the one that looks like a little bit like an eraser. Yeah. And so this is going to be our bird's eye. And it's it's very um it's gonna be very simple. We're just gonna draw, make them look a little bit human almost. So we're gonna go around, and then this area we're just gonna color in. And so if you see the tools I'm using, I'm not using the pencil, I'm using the marker. Oh. So that's the, the one that's on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. Do you see it? It's the one with the like this one here. See the way it's like a little wedge? Yeah. And then this is the settings I have it set at. So do you know how to play with the settings yet? So on there, you when you open that up, you have uh, the, your settings is the one on the right. Yeah, you touch that. And then you can see how the size I've got it. I've got it at 10.7. That's how big I've got it. And then I've got it at 90% and 93 wetness. Okay. Okay. And then that's the size I'm working with. And then um, you, can, you could have also done it with a pencil. It doesn't matter. But now I'm going to color in this whole area here, so I want that to be bigger. So I'm going to go in and move my my uh, size of the pencil a lot bigger. So you can do it just by going into the settings and making it wider. Or you can also go, if you go look, there's also this area right here that has the two different... Uh, let me just get this over here. Do you see this little sliding bar? Yeah. This is the size. So if you move that up and down, it tells you how big the drawing is, how big the actual drawing is going to be. So you can see now. So now see how big this is. Mm -hmm. And if I go down a little bit lower, then it's a little smaller. Okay. So that's a fast way to change your tool size. And all I want to do is be big enough that I can color this in without doing a lot of work. It takes too much time otherwise. Then we have to pick a, what kind of color do you want to uh, your eye to be? What's your favorite mm -hmm. eye color? Blue, brown, yeah, blue. blue. So let's make this guy blue. So then what you want to do is when you click on the color, that's that little dot, mm -hmm. that'll give you all the different colors. And then you just pick your blue. And I'm going to pick that one right there. So you can see on the, the screen how what colors I picked there. That's how I pick my blue, and then I'm just going to color all of this in with blue. I want that to be a little bit bigger because I don't want to take a lot of time, and I want to color in a band of blue. How, how do I make your um, like your writing not like on yours? So mine's darker. Yeah, and so okay. So then take a look at what I did with the the settings, the wetness, and the flow. I had really high for the vintage marker. Okay, so. And then you can't you can't draw this way. You have to draw this way to get the darkest. Okay. So if you don't have it straight up and down, then you don't have a. I'll slow down. There's no big rush. Okay. Yeah. So this we're gonna zoom this in. This is gonna be really small okay. when we're done. So you don't have to worry about the details too much on it. You just have to make, get the basic shape down. And do a, do a little circle in the middle of black, and that'll be your pupil.
I tend to work really fast, so just tell me to slow down if I'm going too quick on some of the stuff. Then you want to put your blue around it. I have two different colors of blue. I went darker blue. First, I went light blue, and then I went dark blue. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm using the marker just because I like the boldness of it. And all I'm doing is put a layer of light blue and then a light layer of dark blue just to make it a little bit more interesting to look at. So then once I had, did you go dark? So then you want to go a lighter blue over top of that. So you sort of have that, see how I have the light blue and then the dark blue? Yeah. So then go with a lighter blue just over top of the space in between. So like right here? Yeah. And you might have to do that in, uh, in your pencil. I go to the pencil and then put that in there and then it'll be dark enough that it'll, it'll cover over top of it. Got her? Yeah. And then what you want to do is you just want to, there's a tool that's called this one. And this one, it won't be on your bar, but it'll be down in the smudge. So you want to find a, the smudge tool. And so what you do is when you click on this, go into the library, and then go down and you'll find one that's called smudges. Which one do I go to? So click on the, the where the pencil, where the, that one right here, like this one right up here. Yeah. You click on that. And then go to the library. See where it says at the very top, library. And then you want to scroll all the way down. And you'll find a thing that that says smudge. Mm -hmm. You see it? So then you want the one that is the round, okay, this one? the smudge round bristle. This one? Yeah, click on it and see what it says. Is that the one? Yeah. So then what you do is just hold it down and pull it over to the side. Yeah, because it's the one you're going to use a lot of. I use that one more than almost anything else. Okay, so then your settings for that, when you take a look, you see the flow that I've got set up? You're gonna bring the flow down a little bit. And we're gonna put the, the size to about 4.5. Now what this does is it just smudges. Exactly that, so what you're gonna do is this. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna pull it across My eye like this. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to do that all the way around just to make it look a little bit more like an eye. Okay. And what it'll do is it'll pull the darker colors. Wherever you start your drawing, the, the pull from, that will pull that color. So if you want the lighter blue, just go to the light blue, and that's where you start the pull. And then what it does is it picks up the other paint along the way. And then you can create this really cool looking eye. Simply by pulling it all the way around. Now, the nice thing about these is you don't have to worry about making any mistakes. That's why we chose to do the hummingbird, because it's a... 
it's one of those ones that you can just draw and it'll look good no matter what we do, no matter how badly we mess it up. So you can pull those longer, right? You see how long mine go? So you, what you do is you just start in there and pull it all the way to the outside. So make them a little bit longer. So it goes out into the white. And then, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing with the black. Now the black won't pull quite as far. And if you want it to smudge easier, you can change the settings. So if I go up into the settings and I put the flow really high and put the strength really high, watch what happens now when I pull the black. Well, See how much easier it goes? Yeah. And so you can do the same thing if you want to push push the push your settings so they're more 84 and 86, then you can pull it much easier. So you're drawing this or you picked a different one? I'm drawing the character. The character you're working on before? Oh no, I finished that one. Did you bring it so I could see it? I didn't end up liking the way that the, some parts of the face look, so I deleted it. Because <laughs> it makes me feel sad. Because I love that character. Felt like a bunch of fun. You're like me. I'm never happy with any of my drawings. I look at them and go, oh, geez, that doesn't look good. But I've decided to start saving them because when I get better, I can always go back and fix them. Yeah, but he deserved better than what that drawing did to him. Good. So then what we want to do is you want to put two dots on there. You know how when you look at someone's eyes, you see the light reflecting? Yeah. So we're going to put two bright white lights in there. And we're going to use our pencil, and we're going to go with white. So, it's right so I went all the way up to the top corner. And then, so you're on your pencil. And so what I'm going to do is this. And I'm going to draw a little box and color it all in white. So that's the first little reflection. And the second one is just going to be a round circle. So the second one is just going to be like a circle, I guess. And that's going to be our bird's eye. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next thing we do is see the little plus sign over here? Yep. We're going to. Put that down, and we're gonna now that's gonna become the beak. Okay, so then we can shut the eye off, and now we're just gonna build a, a long beak. So we're gonna start with black again. Now this is a hummingbird, right? So you want it to be a long pointed. So then you want to go on this one. Mm -hmm. So you want to highlight that and you want to shut that one off. So hit that little, see the little uh, right here. That. Oh. Yeah, touch that and it'll disappear because okay. we'll come back to it after. So now what we're going to do is this is going to, we're going to put a bluish tinge to our beak. Mm -hmm. 
And so we want to use this airbrush. So you see which one I'm using now? This is yeah. called the Flow Airbrush. So we're going to use that once you have your beak. Oh, first you should draw the beak out with it, using your pencil. With this color? Yeah, just black. Doesn't matter because it's we can clean. So what that's telling you is that you're on the wrong one. This one you're going to draw on something that you can't see. So you want to highlight the next layer. So highlight the next layer up here. But you won't be able to do it till you close that. Yeah. Click on that. Mm -hmm. There. Now you can start drawing. So have you ever looked at a hummingbird really close? Um, I saw a couple. I saw one over in Cyprus, which I thought was a bumblebee. It was so small. But it was moving exactly like a hummingbird. So I thought I followed it around and then finally it stopped in a bush and I took a look at it and I thought, geez, is that ever weird? It was like only, only about an inch long. Why does mine keep like um doing it? straight up and down? Um, is it all? Does it have a whole a pattern on it? Um, I don't, I don't know. So go down, go down to like, when you're on here. Take a look. Mm -hmm. Go on here to settings and then go to advanced, mm -hmm. and then go down to nib, and see if there's any. Uh... Okay, so then your shapes uh, shut off um, texture. Okay, now try and draw draw it and see what happens. Now it's better. Now it's better. Yeah. You want it to be thinner than that, I think. Right, because it's a hummingbird, so you want it to be really yeah. thin and long and thin, almost like a little needle. And so you want it to be, uh, that bottom line to be up closer to the line above. Yeah. So just hit undo. There you go. Now make it uh, closer so it's a little, like, more in the shape of what this one is. Okay. Yeah. And then make the, the front of it really long and thin. So it comes to a little point. That's that thing that stick or sticks right in the flower. Don't you love that undo? Mm -hmm. If you're painting in watercolor, that would be like, okay, now I messed it all up and I start all over again. Mm -hmm. well, so just hit undo and it goes away. There you go. Pretty, that'll work. Then what I'm going to do, then you go down there. Now we're going to use the airbrush. So that's this one. Mm -hmm. And we're going to turn that down the, oh, we don't want to be in advanced. I'm going to go to basic and we want to turn it down the size down to about, uh, I don't know, 30. I put the opacity all the way up to 100. Do you know what opacity means? Um, that's how, how, like if you go really light, take a look. Here's what the opacity, if it's really light. You know how light that is and then if you go to opacity at this level yeah. so you see how the, the, there's a big difference between the two so one is just a little bit more see-through than the other and so we want the opacity at 100 and all we're going to do is we're going to put in a bluish tinge so right about there because that's going to be the top of our beak and we're going to smudge those two together so that we have a blue, dark blue, all the way to a light blue. So like that. And then we're going to put in a lighter blue underneath it. And then we're going to go really light blue right at the very top. Go 
Cool. I like yours better than mine. Thank you. And then you're going to pull it using the smudge tool. Smudge tool, we're going to go size is going to be bigger. Flow is going to be stronger. And we're going to smudge all of this together. Smudge. Yeah, smudge tool. Mm -hmm. And then this is a setting I used. 23.6 or so, and then 90 and 94. Doesn't have to be exact, it's just. And then what you do is you just smudge it together by lightning, lightly touching your brush to it, and then that'll pull the stuff together. Okay. Yeah. So it's basically, it's like smearing paint around. And now we have a blue, uh, not a blue jay, a hummingbirds. Okay. Happy? Okay, so then another layer. Turn the eye on so you can see it. Okay. Now we don't like that. Obviously you can't have them overlapping like that, right? Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the top here. You see the top, you see that right there? That's what you wanna press on. So you press that first. Go undone again. So, sorry, you have to highlight the beak first. Yeah, highlight the beak. Don't, don't turn it off, just highlight it so the blue squares yeah. are on it, okay? And then go to that little symbol. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take it and you're just going to do this with it. And move it up here. Like this? Yeah. That, that's our beak. I don't think it, we don't want it that high, though. So let's go down a little bit here. Let's go down to about that spot right there. Okay. And then we're going to go done. And if you didn't like the way you did it, you can always go undo and it'll still, it'll go put it right back to where the size it was. And now we're going to do the same thing with the eye. And so you want to go there and then you want to shrink this down and I want to turn it slightly. Don't make it too small because you want them to be able to, you want them to be able to see. Yeah. Otherwise, you just, you'll never get any never get any flowers what do you think is that good yeah i like it okay, and then you hit done so now we have the eye and the uh, the eye and the beak and now what you're going to do is you're going to highlight this one the one above oh the one below that sorry the beak yeah just poke it up to the outside of the page yeah. and then what you're going to do is when you uh, when you click on it It'll show you a whole pile of different stuff. What you want to do is merge. That means those two now are, the, are together. And so now let's say we decide that we would like the, this to be a little bit smaller. Now they'll both move together. And you can change the angle of it or whatever. So you're gonna I'm going to change the angle of mine so it sits like that. And it's going to be about that size. Do you go here again? Yeah. Okay. Now we have to draw the, the head. We're going to finish off the rest of the head, right? So you take the, the pencil, and I'm going to go, what color should we make his head? Let's make it purple. Like that. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around here. And around here. You got it. Put a little bit of down below. Yep, connect it up there. And...
Good. We also have to put his back on. Yes. Yep. And then we're going to take the whole thing. And again, we're going to hit that little square. And then I'm going to make the, the bird smaller again. So it's all together now. And I'm going to tilt them a little bit. So it's like that now. Good. Now we hit done. And now we're going to work with different colors. And now it's going to get a little bit more freehand. So when you go into here, you go into library. We're going to go down here and we're going to find the tool. It's under shapes. Mm -hmm. We want this one right here. See the one that looks like a feather? You find where we're looking? It's under shapes. And it's the third one. So it's like that. So it says feathery. It's actually called the feathery. This one? Yeah. And now you have to make a decision how you'd like these to look and how big they you, you see that the, the way it actually looks when it's mm -hmm. out and so we're gonna we're gonna have to put that we're gonna take that and put that on his head and i think I, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna work with bright red right up on its head and then we're gonna pull it we're gonna put this on here just by pulling it this way and we can go into the settings and say, I'd like it to be a little bit bigger so we can actually see the feathers a little bit more. So I went to 98. And you see the feathers now coming off his head? Yeah. Give him a mohawk. So we're going to go red. Then I think I might throw some oranges in there. How much you know about your color wheel? Do you know what's opposite the orange on a color wheel? Um, your color wheel's right there. So look at what's directly opposite that. Blue. Yeah. So then what you do is when you go on here, you'd like to put the contrasting colors together. So you, if you went directly across and went right here, then you take that blue and you put that right in here. And the two of them will work really well together. They'll can like they'll just they work together. Yeah. And so they're contrasting colors. And so that's you want to include those together and I, you just sort of keep pulling until you put some, some feathers on his head. And then down on his belly. What we're going to do is we're going to go the orange or sorry the green this color green really bright line line and then we're going to do that here on his belly and then figure out what's directly opposite that so you go over here and it's this one it's the bright pink Then I think I'll put some other greens on there. Let's go in here and go into a darker green. Okay, then what I'm into is a smudge again. And then I'm gonna use a smudge just to pull some of this color down into his head. So we're losing the outline, but we're also coloring in his whole head now by pulling this stuff around.
See how simple that was to color in? It's just a matter of pulling it. And then we'll come back in and we'll put some feathers back in there afterwards. But you want to do the same thing with the belly down here. Is you want the belly to look a little bit more solid. You can still have some feathers sticking out at the bottom, but you want to pull these colors together. I'm starting to give it a little bit of a bird feel. Still with me? Is it windy outside? Oh, it's creaking all over the place, or is this just an old building full of ghosts? How's it going? That's good. Okay, so then the next the next thing that we want to do is we want to put on a big tail, and then we'll come back and we'll do the, the wings right after that. And so the tails we want to pick, we went from this side of the wheel to this side of the wheel, and we went from the greens to the reds we want to go yellows to the purples on this one okay so i'm going to start with the purples because i like the darker color to go on the bottom and then all i'm going to do is i'm going to pull it like this Then I'm going to go directly opposite on the wheel. That should give me this. I'm going to go more brighter yellow than that. smudge tool and then we're going to smudge all this stuff up so it connects with the body so basically we're just connecting the feather the tail excuse me to the body by pulling all this stuff up can I make it more thin the smudges 6.9 is what I have it set at Caught up? You there? Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is these big, huge wings. But I don't like where the bird is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from here, hit that four squares, mm -hmm. and we're going to bring this down to this corner like that. We'll move it again after. But... Right there? Yeah. So we have more room to work on the wings. So we go done. And now the wings, we're going to get go back to the feathers again. So we have to find that. Feather, feather tool. Feather tool, yep, thank you. And we want to go colors, we want to go purples. Really heavy duty purples like that. And we want the feathers to be, go back to the settings on that. We want the feathers to be as big as we can get, like 200, 214. They could go a little bigger, but. That's okay. I like working on that size. And the opacity is really heavy. 
So now when you think about a, a hummingbird, the wings normally work so fast you can't even see them. Yeah. So we're just going to get really carried away with it. So we're going to go like this. So you wanted to have two wings, right? Yeah, so they put it in two different directions. Now let's go up here and see what is directly opposite. So directly opposite is a yellow. But do we like that or do we want to go more with the red? Let's go more with the red and the blue. So let's go in the red in here or pinky we'll put some pink up through it and then we're going to put some blue up through it because when you're red put red and pink together you end up with the purple sorry red and blue together you end up with the purple okay then let's go to the blue this blue in here. And then let's go back up to our smudge tool. And we're just going to smudge this into the back. So it fits in the bird a little bit better. So it starts to fill in that back, back area of the bird. Can I see yours? Face looking that way, over his shoulder. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, yep. Good. Now, here I'll show you a trick. So now we have the the. the basic image that we want to work with take this highlight it sorry highlight it and then what you want to do is you want to hit duplicate it's in the top right hand corner mm -hmm. so then you duplicate again and duplicate again so do you see how it started to make the colors a lot more brilliant and a lot more it's like squeezed together kind of yeah so then what you went, I have four of them. So I did it four times. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge each one of those. So go down and merge, merge, merge. Got it. So then what we're going to do is go again back up to that cross. And I want to put this guy way up here. Right here. Yeah, just in the corner. So he's he's going to end up flying. We're going to draw a flower right here so that he can go into. So is there any part of yours that you don't like? Um, I don't think so. You're okay? So you want to make sure that he you his body is, continues on, right? Mm -hmm. So use your smudge tool and pull this this back part right here. Pull that down so it connects with the with the tail. You see how you have an opening down there? Yeah. Fill that in so he, he's got a complete body.
Okay, so we've got it. The one thing I don't like is I think our beak mm -hmm. is too small for them. So there's a few things we can do. We can draw right over top of it if you want, or you duplicate this. So you can duplicate it, make the first one disappear. Working on the second one, take your eraser. Make sure the flow is at 100%. Make sure your size is like 13 or 10 or something like that. Okay. Then we're going to go in here and erase the bird. So that all we have left, 13 is not big enough. I want that to be bigger. I want it to be at like 35. Then I'm going to just erase the bird because I want to make the beak bigger but I don't want to draw it again because I'm lazy. And I like erasing things. Bird. Yeah. So all you have left is just the beak. What's that? There's so much detail in it outfit because there's like buckles and like lines and so then, so then what I always do is what you want to do is you want to pick one area and just concentrate on that one area. And don't get freaked out by the, the amount of the details. Like so when I was when I was drawing I uh, drew a horse one time and I looked at it and it had a harness and all of this stuff on there and I thought there's no way there's too much. And so what I did is I just zoomed in and then drew it like a oh, hundred little pictures. They all fit together, but then you just do each one and take your time with each one of them. I'll save you, save you having to get stressed out over how much you have to do on it, right? There's no fast way to do that kind of stuff. So I just I made it bigger. Mm -hmm. And then undo this. And then I have to move the bird so he fits inside of... Mm -hmm. If you go by layers, like take a look at... If I take this down below... Then it goes behind that, and then it will be behind. But I want it in front because it's going to cover the little beak, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm going to take the bird now, and I'm going to put the bird so he connects with the beak property. So I'm just going to move him around so he gets to the right spot. So there, now his beak's on. Okay. Where, so. where did it go there? Did you make it disappear? Did you duplicate it first? <laughs> Hit undo. Keep hitting undo until it comes back. Because this is the outfit. And even Keep going. Black, it's... Yeah, bit by bit by bit, you have to pick a spot and work, start working up on it. There's no fast way to do that. Also, I'm not drawing it there. Okay. The other thing you can do is do a layer, and put color in behind it first. Yeah. Because the black isn't really black. Yeah, but do, then you can put your gray over top and smudge the two of them together to create the bluey black color that you have you want. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's not like blue, but it's more like a warmer sort of. So then you just, you want to go in the background though, like do another layer over top that is farther behind it and then put the layer in behind it. <laughs> Did it come back? Yeah, so I went back and. So you duplicated it? So then when you, du when you duplicate it, you want to make, turn off one of them, turn off the one you want to keep. Okay, so you turn off that one and go back on that, this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that one you can erase. You've already duplicated it, so you're okay. Then you have to go into that one. So this one you can't see anymore, it's gone. Yeah. So now that one there, you have to go in, you have to erase everything to make the beak bigger now. Or you can just draw the beak bigger. Okay, so I just like erase this? Yeah. All I'm doing is teaching you how to do, like if you get things like you don't, your beak isn't big enough, then rather than drawing it again. What does it mean? That means you've locked it. See that little thing on the bottom? Oh. You can lock it so it doesn't do anything.
you have to watch too that you don't want to push you don't ever want to put your bird off the page because if it goes off the page then you lose parts of it because anything that's off the page when you move it won't be there afterwards did that make sense like yeah. do you see how i push this right off the edge that means that feather isn't there anymore it doesn't exist Okay, so then you want to make it bigger, right? And then you want to put the uh, the bird in and attach to it. Okay, now take the the light off it. Yeah, and then move the bird. No, yeah, remember you have right. to hit that little. Yeah, and then move the bird so he fits onto his beak. There you go. Now you have a bigger beak on him, right? So then. So then that, the, the fast way to do those type of things mm -hmm. is like what I just did where you just erase. Otherwise, you're actually drawing it. So this is, that's not a big deal because all it was was like two lines and then it's a blue in the middle. But let's say it was the, uh, I don't know, a horse's head and you had the whole section of it that you wanted to, oh, well, it's not big enough. And rather than having to redraw the whole thing, you always want to do it in layers if you can. And so see how this is a separate layer? Now, once it's a separate layer, now I'm going to put it back. I'm going to merge it. So now it's all back into the one layer. Okay. So it's all together again. So I just merge like the beak. Yep. Yeah. Just merge. And then the, then the beak is on there, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's say there's there's a section of it. So let's say I don't like the I don't like this section of it in the middle of his chest. See in here? I don't like the way that looks. Then I could go in there and I can erase that and then just redraw it. So if there's something on your bird that you don't like, like if you decide you'd like the wings to be a little bit more split, to take your eraser in there and just fix it. So I go in here like, I don't like the way this wing is, so then I'm going to take it out. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to put some feathers, some more feathers on the top of it just to make it look a little bit better. Where's my feather gone? Feathers. Where's my feather? And now I'm going to go back into the blue. So do you see how it, now I can make this look like it's, it's meant to be that way with the blue showing through? Yeah. And then you can fix little things like that. Like I also don't like the, how close this feather is. So I would go in there and I take this feather off. To see how it then becomes a little bit more wing, a little bit more of a wing. Yeah. And it's not attached to his back. So I, I like the, I'd like this actually be higher and bent this way a little bit more. So I'm actually going to do that where I go duplicate. I'm going to take this off. Now I'm going to take off, I'm going to hide this one, and I'm going to use my eraser, and I'm going to take off this whole part of it because I just want to move the wings around. I don't like the way the wings are. So I'm going to take this off all the way down to here, and then I'm going to move it so it's in the, in the shape that I want. So I didn't like the way it is there. I want it to be up higher on his body. So I want this to be, put the bird in here, give me back my bird. I'm done with that one, hide that one. And now I'm gonna take the wings off this one. Because I just wanna fix them. So I take this off, the wings. Go away wings. I don't like the way you're sitting on the bird. So I like the bird up to this point, but the wings I put on wrong. And so now when I put these wings back on, now I can move the wings around. And I want to move the wings. Thank you. Wings. Is there an alpha lock on here? Alpha lock? Yeah. Meaning what? Uh, when you put it on, then the only stuff that's like colored on that layer specifically will only cover on that specific spot. You can lock a layer, but I don't think there's an alpha lock at the way you're describing it. Not that I've seen. That's right, because I have it on my other apple, so you have to pause.
Do I have to do all that? No. Okay. I just did it because I didn't like the way my wings looked, so I wanted not to move my wings around. Sure. So what? Sorry. Go ahead. This one like it was like color like that, and if you don't have awful lock on, it will like still continue to color. But if you turn it on, change the color, then it would only paint where it is. Yeah. No. Okay. No, so, I know what you're talking about, but no, there's not. Not that I have found. That doesn't mean it isn't there. You may want to, you may want to ask that question. An alpha lock inside uh, that that app, but I haven't found it. Unless it's hidden in there, which I don't think it is. Okay, so we okay? Yeah. Okay, so then I've got my bird. So now what we want to do is we want to do a really wild flower and so we're going to use a whole pile of different tools here so if you go down one of the neat things in here is all the different in the library it's got all these different um, patterns that are really cool and so you see this one so we're going to start with the splatters and we're going to make a splatter flower and we're going to make a bright yellow but before we finish do you think we should put some green in the body of the bird I think so too. So let's go to the airbrush and let's go into the, uh, we want them to be really brilliant, like on a, a parrot. It's almost like a yellowy green, like in there. Do you see how brilliant that is? And then what we want to do is we want to fill this body back in here. We want to fill it all in with this great, with this green. So now the majority of his body is bright green. See, I like that better. And maybe some right in his head as well. Right underneath his eye. Yours looks like a rooster. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then let's go into the flower now. Because you can play with this stuff. You can play with this stuff for days. But Let's go. What does that look like? That's kind of cool. So does that one, not that one, I don't like that. So we're gonna go into the paints first. So let's go to the paints, this one. So what we wanna do with this, is this is the, gr the grass behind the flower. You know how they have leaves and that kind of stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull this up like this and it's just gonna be the bush that the flower is on. So it's just put it on. You want to see the size of the side, the settings that I have for it? Yeah. Capacity is high. Settings like 37. Remember, you can't do anything wrong with this, so just put it on there. So this is like the grass? Over here? It's kind of like the bush in behind the flowers. So we're going to put a, a couple of different layers on it. So we're going to go with that, that lighter green, and then we're going to go more towards this and behind it. So then we're going to go that. It's going to go right in here. Now I have that on a different layer. Are you on a different layer or are you on, doing it on the same layer? Um, so here's your layers. So is your bird and your flower together? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. It does, like, you can put it on a totally different layer so that if you don't like it, then you don't, you can still have the bird and put another layer on there to find out which one you like. So this is the colors that I this is the color that I used. Mm -hmm. And then I just put that in behind. Cool. Then I'm gonna use my smudge tool again. So I'm gonna move my sludge smudge tool up and I'm gonna move the flow really high. Because then what I want to do is I want to make this too heavy. 
make it smaller and lighter and I want to make it like a bush so like this so do you see the settings 9.2 and 93 and 92 And so this is just because of bush, we're just going to put a little, a few of these little stalks running in the background. Then we're going to go in here and we're going to put a different color green over top of it using and let's go to a different splash paint yeah it's too big take it off take it off take it off i don't like that color either let's go down into this color oh, that's quite a lot With me still? Yeah. So we're going to go back to the smudge tool. We're going to make the smudge tool a little bit bigger. So we're going to move up to about a 15. And we're going to come out of here and put it just up like this. Because that's going to be where our flower is. How's it coming over there, your man? Fine. Slowly but surely. Yes. The thing that I find is my impatience always messes up my drawings because what I do is I don't take the time needed in order to create the, the detail that in order to make it look good. And so I get very uh, tired of doing a painting. That's why I have about 35 paintings going at the same time because <laughs> I get tired of one and then I'll go back to it and that kind of stuff. So try not to get frustrated and work through just the different ones. Okay, so we okay? Yeah. So now what we want to do is we're going to do airbrush. And we're going to work with pink. Really bright pink. And we want it to be bigger. In the same color, all I did is I went down to the darker okay. afterwards, and then what you do is you're just going to put that down here in the bottom like this.
to it with me. So all I'm doing now is just taking the smudge tool and turning these into stringy flowers, which I've never seen before. And if I did, I don't think I'd ever touch them because they're probably poisonous. But actually, what it looks like is those things on the end of a thistle, a thistle kind of flower. I see. That's cool. Okay, so now we want to go in with some yellow. Put some green on the very bottom of it around each one the bottom of each one of the flowers mm -hmm. just to give it a mm -hmm. what the heck's that mm -hmm. darker green So there's a rule of thumb for you. If you want something that's really dark, the pencil will give you probably the darkest mm -hmm. to give you the bran the branches like a, that the flowers are sitting on. So if you want to darken them up, you just take your pencil and do it. If you want a lighter, use your um, either your airbrush or your smudge tool. And the smudge tool will pull it off and lighten it up as you pull it. And that gives you a real interesting little effect when it comes to flowers and stuff like that. So then, once we have that much of the flower done, then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the library again, and we're going to put dots. And I'll show you how you do that. These are drops, and you want to go really, really dark, dark green. And you see what I did is I just put them all around the bottom. So you need to put some green around the bottom of your flowers. And then I just use some dots just to give it a, a little bit more interest. I want my settings on that to be really big here.
Now you're getting better. You're freestyling a little bit more. I just duplicated it a couple times just to darken it up. But I had my flowers separate from my bird. And so that allowed me to darken the flowers without messing my bird up and making my bird too dark. But So what I did with it with this, see how I put these little dots here? Yeah. That's just to fill in some of the, the background. And so that's I went into these ones called drops. Mm. It's under uh, shapes. This one? Yeah. And then what I did is I just made it um, a darker black or so because it'll come up gray the first time you put them on because it won't go on really dark. So that's a good spot where you're at. It's not bad. And then just all I did was made it really big. So you see they're, they're at 200. Sorry, the settings at 200 and one. So they're huge. Okay. And then all I did was I just went chunk across the bottom corner and chunk across the top just to give it a little bit of a interest. Like this? You don't want it to look very uniform. Yeah, that's fine. But they're they're too big and too dark. I don't like them that big and dark. So um, hit undo and go down to a little bit smaller. What are you at? Two hundred or something? Bring it down to about uh, one eighty-five or something like that. And then bring the uh, bring your opacity down a little bit. For some reason, yours is darker than mine. Go to your your advanced settings and let's see what you got on for for. Uh, shapes and see if you what shapes you have so your hardness turn your hardness down to nothing okay and then click on ignore edge yeah. that's better that's not so wild yeah better okay and then just put a little a few of them yeah <laughs> that's a good spot for me there that looked good Okay, so then there's a few things that, that you want to look at when you're when you're looking at your drawing then. First thing you do is spin it upside down. The whole picture. Turn your nope. Just take the whole iPad and turn it right upside down. Okay. Yeah, and look at it upside down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now is there anything on there that catches your eye that you don't like? Because when you're looking at it right side up, there are some things that you you won't see, but when you uh, turn it upside down. Like I really like your your flowers. I mean your the flowers in the bottom, but I don't think you're sitting in the corner of the page. So um, turn it back right side up. So then take your whole canvas and make your canvas smaller, and see. Do you know how to do that? Just go like this. Okay. See how your flowers aren't even down in the corner. Yeah. So you want to pull them, pull that down. Can I go here? No, I don't think you'll be able to. I think you'll just have to add in some more green. Or smudge it. You can also just pull it. But see how mine's sitting down in the corner. Yeah. You can do, you can do it by um, taking the whole thing and making it, it bigger and fitting it into the corner. Try that and see what happens. Yeah. Like your first instinct is probably good. Go up there to that little to this thing. Yeah. And then just make it bigger. Yeah, make the whole thing bigger and fit it into the corner. You will lose the bird. Wait. 
like the other thing you can do is put it duplicate the layer and then just make the flowers bigger do you know what i mean so go back to done and go undo just to make sure it didn't move so duplicate the whole layer duplicate yeah and then uh hide the one the bottom one yeah because you want to keep all you want to keep the other stuff and then delete the bird out and delete the dots out okay, so I just... erase it Make it yeah, make it big. Yeah. So then we can just move the flowers around, right? So now your flowers are on a different layer. Okay. And then go uh, up there to that little cross thing again and then move that to where you want it to be. Now, do you want it to be wider that way? You can also pull it this way, right? Like this one? Yeah, so if you want it to be, and then, so if you press this one here, press that one right there. Now pull the corners. Mm -hmm. You see, you can move it into any shape you want. Yeah. So if you decide you'd like to have it more big this way and reaches into the corner or whatever, you can just pull the, the one side thing or pull this one. Or, and anything you don't like when you're done, you can go back and say undo if you don't like the way it looks. So. Do you like it like that? Yeah. Better? Okay, then it's hit done. Okay, then duplicate that whole layer. Let's see how brilliant your flowers become. Does that look better or worse? Um, better. Okay, so then merge those two layers. Right. Merge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like this? Yeah, but now the, the first layer, you're going to have to get rid of the, the little the flowers, right? Because you moved them now. Mm -hmm. So hide your second layer, the top one. Up top there. Yeah. And then go down and erase the flowers off of that one. Go down one, one there, yeah. and then erase those flowers. Because you don't want two sets of flowers in there. Okay, now unhide the other layer. There. Now you don't have two sets of flowers. So the other, the the thing that now, when you're doing something. If you close your eyes, close your eyes and open them really fast to the picture. What do you see first? Um, the flower or the bird? I think the flowers. So what what do you want to be your focal point? Do you want the flowers to be the focal point? Or do you want the flower or the bird to be the focal point? The if, bird. And you want to make the bird bigger. Mm -hmm. Right, so then you just go to that layer and just make that, that bird bigger. So go to the lower layer. Mm -hmm. This one with the bird on it. Yeah, and then hit the plus up there, and then make that bird bigger. Doesn't matter if you lose the uh, the dots; you can put the, always put put them after there. Now that that's cool. Now I like it like that. Yeah. Okay, then hit done. That's better, right? I like it too. Now, now when you open your eyes, the two of them are almost identical, almost yeah. the same. So you have to do some details on the bird. Because the bird's chest and stuff like that, and we're going to put some little dots on there. So, you know, the dots you put up here, these big ones, yeah. you're going to take those and you're going to make them a, little, a lot smaller. Go back to basic settings. Go the size a little bit smaller. And we're going to go to a darker green or a, um, something because we want to just scatter some across his chest. So, in here. How small do I make them? I've got it at 28.4. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And just see the way I sort of just scattered him around his chest a little bit. Just to make his chest look a little bit more like a hummingbird chest. And then I'm going to put in some bright yellow ones too.
speckled belly hummingbird. So when you're putting those speckles on, if they get carried away and you, you've got them in a the spot where you don't want, then just go in there and just, uh, you can smudge them out simply by using your smudge tool. Mm -hmm. If you have too many of them in the wrong, in the wrong spots, they're very easy to take off because you just go in and just sort of smudge the stuff together. And then I want to go higher intensity on the smudge I want to put a few more details in the in the feathers and stuff like that. Simply by trying to incorporate the colors and the birds' feathers and those type of things a little bit more into the body. It's too heavy though. So what I would do with your, your tail is I take your tail and see how it, you have to pull it out this way a little bit more on each side. More to the outside though, so it's more like a, so it fans out a little bit, so it becomes more like a fan. So you're pulling straight down like this, pull this way a little bit. Like this way? So I'd start here and I'd pull it out that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. You want them to fan out a little bit. You might even have to do it with your with the the color and put it on with a pencil, just to bring it in a little bit more. Because you'd like that. You like the the purple. I want to do the purple, and I want it to be, pull out a little bit this way, just so it is a little bit more of a fanny shape. So then on this, this right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up and all it is is a black line. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to populate it with a whole pile of yellow dots. So I'm going to go in here and find the, the dots again. And I'm going to go yellow, bright, bright yellow. And then this is going to become the stamen of the flower. I think that's what it's called, the little thing that sticks up out of the flower. So I'm going to go bright yellow, and I'm going to go a little bit darker to sort of hide it in there. And then I'm going to smudge this into the background a little bit more. So I'm going to smudge some of these over top of it. I think I want to put some red on there too. Some really dark, some really bright red.
I haven't got to help you a lot. So what else you got going on there? Let's see how you're going, progressing now. Wait, you went to something totally different. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Spookiest flower you've ever seen in your life. Why do you want to, um, like the black line that's in? Of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't even have to do it if you don't want to. If you like your flowers the way they are, don't do it. I like them the way they are. Then don't do it. You always want to work with yours. Your gut instinct, so it makes an artist. Stop. Okay, now I've got some stuff floating around here. You see this stuff down here? So if I duplicate a layer, so let's duplicate this layer and see what happens. Yeah, you see I've got some little stuff floating around there. I have to go back in with my eraser and remove some of the stuff. Merge these two. Merge. Get rid of some of this. Well, that's on the other one. Layer issues. So what would you do to fix yours? Mm. Anything that catches your eye? How much did you put any little black dots in here? No. In the flowers? So what I what I did, and I haven't done it yet, but normally in the bottom of a flower, I'll go with those dots again, and I'll just put them in here, because what it does is it just gives the, your flower a little bit more depth to it, so it's not very, so it gets darker as you get closer to the bottom of it, where it would be a little bit thicker. And then I'm also going to put some of these little dots. I have them set at 2.4, 2.84. I'm going to put some of those dots in here just to add to whatever this stuff is floating around in the sky. I put a whole pile of those dots in here too, eh? in the flat in the yeah. grass. And then I'm just adding in some of this stuff here just to fill in some of the negative space. I need some brighter yellow. In my flowers. Yeah, I like that. I put some uh, using a pencil, mm -hmm. I put some yellow lines right inside my flowers. Just again to make it look a little bit more like a, that thistle, a little spiky thist thistles that you see in the summer. And I'm also going to put some yellow lines in here just to give my flowers like another little stalk that's coming up out of the ground.
So now you have to pick a background color. How do you do that? At the very bottom, you see that little circle? Yeah. Click on it and pick a color. Now, I wouldn't go with any bold one. Yeah. So what I would do is I'd move it back into like into this into this area here and then work with the different colors in there and decide okay so i'd like it to be a, maybe a light green or so even that's a nice so it's just a different other than just pure bold white i think that looks better on mine Okay. Yeah, so do I. That's a big color match. You have a good eye for that. So then the other thing that you may want to put on there, now that you have this thing's dying on me. Um, I have to leave it in there. What I would do now is I would go in and I would put on his feet. I don't know if I can do it. So I'll put it on a different layer because you may not like it, but I can't do it without my, my pencil has died. What's a layer? A layer is just another one of these. So you've got a white layer on top. So if you draw it on there and you don't like it, you just hide it. What's Have you it? saved anything yet? I know. So then you should go up here and hit this and hit save. And then go to uh, the gallery and then save a copy of it or save the original yeah hit that yeah then it'll take it back and then now you have to click on that again okay. yeah right in the middle of it and then it'll go back okay. so as you're working if, you, if you're at a stage where geez i, I really like what i've got I, i'd like to save it then you want to go in there and uh hit a hit a copy of it because if you do it a second time what it'll do is it'll save a second copy of it so you go like this and you go gallery and then you mm -hmm. go save the current sketch if you do it again it'll save a copy of it so you can save it at different stages. So I just draw the detail there? Yeah, try it. Can I make it more darker? So it's bolder? Yeah. Uh, pencil straight up and down. The moment you turn it on its side, it's like it's, uh, when you shade. Mm -hmm. But if you want it to be bold, you want it to be... I kind of leave mine very rough like that, just a few little lines. Now, if you ever want to see the, the whole drawing without all the stuff around it, just put the, hit that little uh, thing in the top corner. Mm -hmm. And then what it does is it makes everything disappear and then you can actually just look at the drawing and decide whether or not you like what you've got or what you don't like. My guy looks kind of angry. He needs to chill out. charge my pencil for a minute so some of the things that I, i'm going to fix like you see the way the yellow is in here yeah i don't like the way the lines are and the let yellow here is too too bold as well so what i'll do is i'll go in with my smudge tool make my smudge tool very thin and just sort of go in there and just light that up a little bit so if you don't like your feet you notice how you have it on a totally different layer 
Yeah. Like they tend, they tend to tuck them inside their body or up close to their body. He looks like he's going to land. And I don't know if your bird would actually land, but yeah. it's up to you whether or not you leave it, you want to leave it or not. If you don't want to leave it, then what you do is just go over there and hit that, the eye. So hit the eye at the very top. Yes. And you see how it disappears? Yeah. And then look at the picture and decide whether or not you like it or not. If you don't like it, then just delete that whole layer. So the video usually tuck in? They normally have them where they, they have them. Unless they're going to land, they have, they'll have they put them up right on, almost into the feathers underneath their belly. So you can hardly see them. That's why I just like, see how I just did the little squiggly, a few little black lines there. Okay. Rather than making it, it, it look like it look like he's going to land on the flowers. So it depends on what you want to do with it. It doesn't matter. Like That layer is closed, so you're not going to be able to drown it. Um, just put another layer. Put I a layer. Think I want, like, then don't put them on. That's the nice thing about this, is it? No right or no wrong. Okay, so I'm going to go around now, and I'm going to, I hope this is working now. Yeah, it is, okay. So I'm going to go into my smudge tool, and I'm going to set my smudge tool settings really low, so the flow and the size is really low. And then what I'm going to go in, and I'm just going to soften up some of these. So you see how, I, as I go over top, I'm working right here in this area. All I'm going to do is soften some of those really bright lines. I like the yellow highlights, but I don't like them to be so bold, and so I'm just going to fix them by lightening them up with a smudge tool. So all I'm doing is softening up some things. And so if there's an area that I don't like, some area that I drew or it didn't work very well, then I'll go in and I'll just soften it up by going over them so they're not all, so it looks like they fade into the background a little bit. And they're not they're right on top of the flower. They're sort of part of the flower. So all I'm doing is softening these up a little bit. And then I just take it down. And look at it and see what I like and what I don't like. Still don't like that yellow on his wings. Smudge him in, smudge him in, smudge him in. Can I do, just delete this one? Yep. So you highlight it, and then it'll come up with the, there'll be a delete in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That goes away. I sometimes have so many layers, I don't know which ones are good and which ones aren't. Yeah. And it confuses the crap out of me, but by the time I'm done, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, these feathers are bad. Though. Smudge, smudge, smudge for me. And now to, 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 to I'm going to do some of these flowers right here. Just a little uh, extension of them. So there's two things you're going to do. One, let me put this all back on. I can take that whole layer and I can go into this tool up here. So I'm going to duplicate it. Duplicate it first up into that layer. I'm going to go up into this one and you can do this. Yeah. So what I did is I flipped the, the flower to the other side. So I'm going to go done. I'm going to get rid of that one. And I'm going to say, I don't want the bird there. So let me take that bird out. Put this really high. I'm going to take this bird right off because I don't want the bird there. And then I'm going to put that other, the other bird back on. And then I'm going to take off most of that flower because I don't want to draw the flower again. I just need some green on that side. So then I'm going to do that. Put this one back on. And do you see what I did with the two layers? Yeah. Overlapped them. So now the bird came in front. So now what I'm going to go in is I'm going to take this other one that's just a flower on that side, and I'm going to erase the flower in behind it. And just by erasing some of that, then I've got another flower on that side. 
and then I can decide if I want to keep it or not. What do you think? Look better with it there or not? If it's going to stay there, then I want to make sure that it does this. I'm going to turn this up way out. Size is fine. I need the flow way up. Last thing you do, once you have everything right and you're happy with it, go to pencil, decide what color you'd like to do it in, and then you have to sign it somewhere. So I'm going to sign it right here. But it's below that. It's the wrong layer. Your initials? Of course. That means you're happy with it. Maybe I'll put a butterfly in there later on, too. Save the sketch and its current copy. And voila, we have a hummingbird and a flower. Did you like it? Yeah. I think you did a good job for the first one. Thank you. So have you drawn a lot before? Um, You're a doodler? Um, yeah, a little. Because you have some that you have a natural feeling for colors, which is good. Like when you picked out colors and when you did the flowers. This, this part down here for you is really nice with the flowers in it. I really like it. Like, you did a good job on that. I think it worked out well. Thank you. And as you got more comfortable, because when you first started the bird, you, were very com you weren't very comfortable with some, smudging some of the colors together and that kind of stuff. And so the bird bird's uh, crown on the top and its wings aren't as strong as they could be. But uh, your feather, your flowers are awesome. Okay. And the fact that you picked the pink in the background, I think, worked as well. So, you did a good job. And that's your first lesson. We have about uh, eight minutes left or so. So, we'll decide if you'd like to uh, start another sketch mm. or just play with that one or put the other green on the other side if you like. Like what I did with it, where you duplicate it, see if that looks any better on yours or not. What did you do to like it's like yeah? It's really I duplicated it first. So you go here. So first I duplicated it. So go to what's that one? Get rid of that. That's because you saved it, right? Okay, go duplicate to the what the flower, just the flower itself, mm -hmm. right? Duplicate that. And then highlight it, highlight. So then go up there to the star again. Yeah. And then see where it says there flip. You want to flip sideways. On this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what you want to do is you have to decide whether or not you, how much of the flower you want to keep, how much you want to get rid of. Right? And so what the heck did I got in there? I left the whole pile of that. stuff in behind it. I think I just like it with like the one. The one? Okay. Because then all I did was like, when I got it in there, all I wanted was like a little bush. So then I just took the flower off the top and you just erase it. And then that's the way you can create it. So then some of the other tools you have on here that I use a lot of. This one here you'll find really useful to make. This is a sparkle. So the sparkle 
if you take it, turn your settings down a little bit, put the opacity really high, and then make this like, let's say yellow or something like that. What it does is you see that little sparkle that just came up? Yeah. So you can put that in different spots and it'll just add a little bit of a sparkle. The white, watch what you can do with the white when it comes to the eyes and stuff like that. Just layer them on, another layer behind it. Um, so you see how you just put a little sparkle in his eye? Yeah. And you can put little sparkles in here. So it's kind of a cool thing just to make a, make it look a little bit more fantasy style type stuff. So I just put a whole pile of little white dots all over this. So it looks like the light is shining off of the dew or whatever. And then there's another tool in here that's really exciting. And this one is, you'll see it, it's called uh, the glow brush. Mm -hmm. The glow brush is really cool because what it does is it goes really bright. So if you're working with white, what you do is if, if you put that on, it'll stand out and pick up, it'll glow with all the stuff around it. So do you see how I put that on the, the breast of the bird? Yeah. And here's like down, down here. And if I want to put it in the wing, I just see how it picks up the color from behind. Mm -hmm. And it just gets really bright. And that's called the glow airbrush. And it's one that I use once in a while if I want the, something to really stand out. Like see this part of the bird, the, sta the flower, the stamen. If I'd like that to stand out, I just go over it with the glow and then it just stands out better than anything else. Maybe I like the light to reflect off of here a little bit. So you just draw it and you can see how it comes up. Excuse me. My son. Give me two seconds. Hello, Derek. How's it And there you go. I'm going to put some glow around my initial. Ta-da! Hummingbird. Okay, guys, we're done. Do I just save it? Yep. Yep, save it every time. It'll come back up when you uh, when you restarted it, but you should save it each time. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you. You're welcome.